Psalms are a wonderful book. I find myself turning there in times of confusion, in times of pain, in times of suffering, even in times of joy. Somebody had said that if uh, David had had Prozac, we wouldn't have the Psalms. <laughs> because they're up and they're down, are they not? <laughs> but isn't that life? The ups and the downs of life. No matter what you're going through, you can find a psalm to bring you comfort and strength, encouragement for your heart. Psalms 34, 4 says this. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. <laughs> Let's read that together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Lord Jesus, as we look in your word today, we ask that you would stir our hearts by your precious Holy Spirit in this place. Lord God, that you would quicken us, that you would encourage us, that you would be the lifter of our head in such a time as this that we find ourselves in. Lord God, we look to you, for great are you, Lord. You are on the throne today. Nothing has shaken you. Nothing will thwart your plan, Lord God. And so we worship you today. Lord, we pray that you, O oh God, would continue that good work you've begun in our hearts. And when we will say with the psalmist, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. Lord, seal your word upon our hearts, we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing, O oh Lord. In your sight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. We live in such a divided time, don't we? We do. Not only is it Democrat, Republican, right, left, now we have those who are vaccinated and the non-vaxxers. There's a word for them. <laughs> the non-vaxxers, right? And, and, the, and the tension is real, and boy, you, get, you can't help but get in a conversation, and you can tell right away what, side, what camp they're on. <laughs> The mask. Some people are afraid to wear the mask because they don't want to breathe their carbon dioxide. Other people are afraid not to wear them. And, and, and again, the strong feelings are there. If people just wore their mask or if people just would take their mask off, they wouldn't have trouble breathing, right? And so it goes back and forth, back and forth. And I believe what's behind that, it's a heated emotion. No matter what side you're on, it's, it gets very heated. And I think the reason that it gets very heated is because of the fear that is in their heart. The fear. The fear is way worse than the COVID. <laughs> now, I'm not belittling the COVID. <laughs> I'm not. We've been praying sincerely day and night around the clock every time the thoughts come to mind for those that are suffering. And it is real. Don't get me wrong. But the fear in people, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. People talk about facing your fears. <laughs> I remember when Pastor, uh, when he had gone through all the oral chemotherapy that was possible for his brain tumor, and he went to the infusion room. You know, they park you there. And they pump you through with IV intravenous chemotherapy. It was a fearful time for me in my life. And I prayed for him. He was probably number one on my prayer list. <laughs> I remember laying in bed and putting my, head, my hand over on his head and praying for that tumor to be gone. But my second prayer was always, Lord, help me with the fear. <laughs> Help me to the, with the fear of what if he's not healed. Help me with the 
fear of what on earth will I do? Lord, I needed his hand upon me because the fear was just as bad as the cancer. And so we pray at a time like that. I think I, I remember many times as a child being called a fraidy cat. Any other fraidy cats here? I was a fraidy cat. As a child, there was always something under my bed or something coming out of the closet or there was something. Yeah, it might have been my brother's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that fear that comes up within us. We used to watch Monk. Anybody seen Monk? <laughs> I like Monk. <laughs> you know the TV show. <laughs> yeah. He's afraid of germs. <laughs> he fit right in, right? <laughs> he should do a sequel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's always afraid of all kinds of things. Some I could relate to. Heights, snakes, flying. Milk, not so much. I just don't like it. <laughs> but so many things. And if we were honest, we would say, oh, yeah, I see what he's getting at. <laughs> His little. <laughs> right? As he walks along, he's trying to overcome those fears. He was afraid to shake hands. Boy, we would be right there today. <laughs> I guess he didn't know about the fist bumps. We laugh, and yet we know there's a root behind it, don't we? We know that. Fear is real to all of us. All of us. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. <laughs> common to man. You're afraid of this or that? Guess what? You're not alone. You're not alone, right? But God is faithful. We need to remember that he is on the throne. Do bad things happen to good people? You bet they do. They do. But God turns them for good. God uses them for good. It's for his glory it's for his glory. It's for those that are watching and saying, wow, they're really suffering. And we have those within our church who are really suffering. And I dare say, and many of them are not able to be with us yet, but they're on the mend, so hopefully soon. But I dare say to them, people are watching them. How will they respond? Will they give up on God at such a time like this? Or will they press in? Will they press in? Amen? I posted on Facebook this week, I was so proud of my church. I was so proud of them because even in their own suffering, they're checking on one another. At one point, they were calling from the Port Jervis Hospital to the Poughkeepsie Hospital to check on their brother or sister. <laughs> Those that were like, well, can I get anybody anything? We made some porch runs, didn't we? We dropped off stuff on their porch and we leave, <laughs> right? But I was proud, and I hope that's not a sin, to be proud of your church. <laughs> but I was proud of you. I was. We need each other, right? And so we become the hands of God. But in times of suffering, our testimony is magnified. Amen. It's magnified. Will we shudder in fear or will we still trust in the name of the Lord our God? Amen. Right? I choose to trust in the name of the Lord our God. He, he promises, he goes on there in Corinthians, and he says, and God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted above what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. 
He will provide. Some of you probably thought in the last couple of weeks, I don't think I can take any more. God uses these times in our lives to show us he's God and we're not. And he's in control and we're not. <laughs> we like to be in control, don't we? But God is in control. And when we are his and he is ours, he's got it. He's got it. Some of us suffer, yes. Some of us suffer very greatly. But God is with us. He's with us. He's with us. We sang that song, though the mountains are cast into the sea, I will not fear. Why? Because this life is not all there is. There's so much more than what goes on in this life. Fear is nothing new. <laughs> it came right after sin, right? In the garden, in Genesis 3, 9 and 10. <laughs> God's walking, God walked with man in the cool of the day. <laughs> One day he's not there. <laughs> God's calling, Adam, Adam, where are you? <laughs> Here's his response. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. He was afraid. Once sin entered, he was afraid. That was the first fear. And the last fear we all face is death. It's death. Paul talks about the last enemy being death in 1 Corinthians 15, 26. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's why Christians go crazy on Easter Sunday because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen? And so we rejoice. This is not all there is. Praise God. Some of us have had more suffering than others. <laughs> but it makes us long for that day when we'll be with Jesus and there'll be no more pain. No more suffering, no more tears, and no more dying. Death will be destroyed. Amen? So that's the God I serve, a God of the living, not of the dead. Amen? So mankind begins and we end with fear. <laughs> so we wise will face it. <laughs> right? My cough drop got a little um, humid, and it stuck. Sorry, you can edit that out, right? <laughs> the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Death will die, amen? It will die. We tend to carry fear with us, all kinds of fear. It's nothing new to 2021. We face fear all the time, don't we? We worry about our bodies, we worry about sickness. We worry about disease. We worry about harm, accidents. Did you know you can park at the post office and someone can run right into you? <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know you can be mugged? We worry about our minds. I'm forgetting things, right? We worry about that. We worry about poverty. We worry about losing a job. We worry about a house or a car or not enough food. We worry, we worry, we worry about loneliness. We worry about being single for our whole life. We worry about being divorced. We worry about being widowed. We worry, we worry, we worry, we worry. We worry about getting old, wrinkled, forgetful, needing help. We worry about the past, if our sins will be forgiven. We worry about the present. Are people going to accept us? We worry about future things. What's coming? What's around the bend? Some of us wait for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Whoa, that's a lot to worry about. I'm not trying to scare you today. I'm just trying to face your fears. Much of what we worry about never happens. <laughs> 
Someone was arguing with their pastor, well, worry works, because most of the things I worry about never happen. <laughs> right? We get all worked up and all stressed out about things there's nothing we can do about. Could be what we feed our minds with. I know as a girl, my father loved the police stories, the murder mysteries. I still like the whodunits, but I had a point in my life where I had to say, you know what? <laughs> they put a lot of fear in me. <laughs> like I was afraid to walk alone in a parking ramp. <laughs> things like that, because I'd seen things, right? I don't know how many murders I saw. Of course, the old shows are almost humorous if you watch them today because it's like it's not really scary at all. <laughs> right? We were so we've come so immune to that in our entertainment. I know my sister who was married to a state trooper and he had a drug dog. She didn't watch the news at all because that was her husband on the front line. Yeah. It's all around us. The fear comes up within us, right? There's something under the bed. There's something behind the door. There's someone outside. Could be a skunk like in my neighborhood this week. Right? That's a fearful thing, too. The Bible has much to say about fear. A whole bunch. Looking at my concordance just real quick. 63 references to do not fear. How about that? Do not fear. Do not fear. I think of the times in Scripture where angels would appear to men and the first words out of their mouth was almost always, do not fear. <laughs> do not fear, Gideon, that we talked about recently. Do not fear, God is with you, mighty man of valor, right? Do not fear, you found favor with the Lord, Mary. Right? Do not fear, they told the shepherds. Yeah, do not fear. Be of good cheer. It's in there too. Do not be afraid. God's word has a word for us today. In the midst of our fear, he has reached out. He reaches out to us through his word. We have fear about earthly possessions. There are many who don't know where their food's coming from today, right? We have fear about those things. Others are concerned about their job, losing it. What will they do? Many have lost their job recently, right? Many are just afraid to go back. Everywhere, help wanted signs, right? Many companies there for a while, especially, it seemed like they were realizing if we let the guys go with all the experience that the guys who've gotten raises all along, <laughs> we could hire somebody for less money, right? Yeah. Others are concerned with their investments, with their social security. You ever talk to a young person? My kids say, there ain't going to be no Social Security left for me. <laughs> no hope in that anymore. We fear our retirement, maybe stocks and bonds if you've got them. God instructs us to be wise with the money entrusted to us. Tells us to be wise with it. Right? We give him the 10%, and then we got to still use wisely what we've got left, right? our possessions, we worry about them. <laughs> and it's not just the wealthy people who worry about them. Sometimes the poor people worry more about them. I, I've told this story before, but I remember when we came to Ellenville, we lived on Coster Place and then a downstairs apartment. I remember moving in and we had a colored television set. <laughs> I laughed telling you this, and a VCR. And I was afraid someone was going to steal them. <laughs> Is that funny? That's funny. We worry about our possessions, right? 
James Dobson on Focus on the Family said, do you possess them or do they possess you? And he liked to tell this whole story about getting a swing set for his kids. And he said, and then I read the instructions and every Saturday I was supposed to go off out there and tighten all the screws. <laughs> so he said, I don't know if I'm possessing it or it's possessing me. That's how our possessions are. My husband was famous for saying there's no U-Hauls behind a hearse. Yeah. It's true. But Psalms 37, 25 says this. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They're always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Amen. God blesses our generosity, and he's always generous with us, isn't he? Amen. Every single one of us is not taking any of our savings to heaven. <laughs> no. When people say they left this to so-and-so and they left that to so-and-so, Guess what? They leave it all. <laughs> they leave it all. They don't get to take any of it with you. <laughs> Some of you were just relieved. Whew, I don't have to take that stuff with me, that junk. Others of you got fear in your heart. Oh, no, who's going to get my stuff, right? Job said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. <laughs> It won't, all that stuff isn't going to make it to the next world. <laughs> when we get to the next world, <laughs> that's going to all be trash. What were we even attached to that for, right? All we work for in this life is left for someone else. So why worry about it? Why worry about it? Paul tells us, in 1 Timothy, as he's writing to Timothy 6, 6 and 7, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. <laughs> Remind yourself about that when you got to start worrying about this or that. We brought nothing in, we're going to take nothing out. <laughs> it might Help to remember what money can't buy. Money cannot buy health. Can't buy happiness. It can buy stuff, but that's not happiness, right? Can't buy joy. It can't buy peace. Peace of mind does not come with money. It's been said that money can buy everything but happiness <laughs> and take man everywhere but to heaven. Yeah. We worry about getting old. We worry about it. We live in a culture that idolizes youth. Women in America, it's just amazing. They don't turn gray until they're about 70. It's just amazing, this life that we have. There's no need to call Greg Collins. <laughs> no reason at all, all right? Let's just leave my hairdresser out of it. <laughs> Right? Beauty is so stressed. <laughs> to the point where women can't age gracefully. Scripture talks about wisdom and gray hair. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of wisdom these days, is there? Wow. I, if I'm honest with you, I must say I really admire women who gracefully let their hair turn. That's uh, that's amazing to me. I have a niece that's doing that. Yes, I have a niece old enough to have gray hair. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Physically, we fear the loss of beauty. Isn't it God's grace that men's eyesight fade as women's beauty fades? <laughs> Isn't that God's mercy to us? That is so kind of him. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Sometimes in the age, we fear the loneliness that comes with it. 
My grandfather lived to be 94, and you know what? At his funeral, and I've gone to older people in their 90s, their funeral, and you think, oh, it's going to be packed because they've lived such a life. But no, all their contemporaries are gone, and it's just family. <laughs> just family. If they don't have a church family, right? Yeah, the fear of loss of control. I remember years ago going to an insurance class to reduce our car insurance, you know, and um, it was an AARP one. And somebody said, there's a time when you hand your keys over. Boy, there was this surge of anger in the room. Nobody's taking my keys away from me. Just let them try it, right? Because there's a lack of control there. And we fear that about getting old. That somebody else may pick what we wear. And it may not look that great. <laughs> Someone else is going to pick what we get for supper. Yeah, we fear that. We don't like that. But consider this. Aging is a blessing. Not everybody makes it. Aging is inevitable. It's part of life. It's appointed by God. I know I can't do everything I used to do. <laughs> Being cheerful helps. Laugh at life. Laugh. You might as well laugh, right? We're not alone. We're not alone. I remember years ago, Amy Moore told me this story. She said of two friends that went out to lunch, and the one lady picked up the other lady, and they're driving all along, and she thought, I know this is terrible, she thought. We've been friends for years and years. I know this, but I cannot remember her name. So they get to the restaurant. They're sitting there. They're talking a little, and her mind is just preoccupied. What is her name? What is her name? Finally, she says, I got to admit this. We've been best friends forever. She leans over. She takes her hand. She said, honey, I am so sorry, but my mind today, she said, I can't remember your name. And the woman looks at her, pats her back, and says, how soon do you need to know? <laughs> that happens to us, and that's a fearful thing to us. <laughs> and people worry about that. We worry about that. We need to laugh at that. <laughs> We're all aging, right? Think about those who have accomplished great things in their 80s. Right? Moses was called to lead God's people out at 80 years old. It was a 40-year journey, <laughs> and it wasn't easy. Daniel was in the lion's den at about the same age, about 80. So when you see a painted picture of a young Daniel resting on the lions, that's not how it was. <laughs> he was 80 years old. Winston Churchill, maybe some of you remember that name, at 80. At 80, he was a powerful leader. At 90, Michelangelo was the chief architect of St. Peter's. At 90, how about that? Yeah, over and over again. I hope to use every year that God gives me. How about you? <laughs> to do exploits for him. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The NIV puts it this way, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. You feel that? You don't have all the collagen you need between your bones anymore, <laughs> right? Out, outwardly, we're wasting away, yet inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Fears concerning our body. Have you ever felt good when you got up in the morning and the first person you see says to you, are you okay? You look tired. You look tired. 
then they go about their way, and your mind's thinking, I do feel kind of tired. Yeah. Then someone else comes up, are you all right? Boy, oh boy, you go home sick, because you just don't know what's going on, what you're coming down with. <laughs> Heaven forbid there was COVID, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Joyce works with a mask on all the time. They have plexiglass around their desk, and still, she's got to stay home for 10 days. She's fine. Doctors, psychiatrists, they'll tell you sickness often starts in our mind. <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not feeling so good. Well, I didn't sleep so good. And before you know it, it's snowballing and you're sick. Hmm? Real diseases, though, they worry us, don't they? The C word, I call it, cancer. <laughs> it worries us. Now the C word could be something else. <laughs> I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> I'm not going to give it that standing. <laughs> yeah. Fear makes the disease worse than it really is. Our attitude makes the difference, doesn't it? It does. When people are so worried and they're so fearful, their healing is delayed at best. They'll tell you as someone goes through cancer, if their attitude stays good, their chances are so much better. How long did your dad live, you guys? A long time after his diagnosis because he still was splitting wood. He still was doing what he needed to do, right? 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. What? In weakness? When I'm feeling weak, your strength is made perfect in me? Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, what's it there for? <laughs> therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You feeling weak today? He's strong. He is strong. We know our God is able to heal. We know this. We know the price was paid, right, by the stripes he took upon his back. He's able to restore to health. Amen. Lori gave her testimony today. Next week, I'm sure there'll be more testimonies of God's healing in their hearts and in their lives. But the truth of the matter is God is sovereign. He knows the way that I take, Job said. And when he has tried me, I will come forth as pure gold. That's what Job said. Did you ever read the book of Job? Wow. Wow. His friends were messing with his head, too. <laughs> right? Yeah. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He's going to do what he's planned to do. And believe me, he doesn't waste a thing. Pastor, this hurts. I know. I know. I know some of you have suffered Greatly, <laughs> greatly. I know it hurts. I've been there. I've been interceding for you. But God chooses to use this to magnify your testimony, to test our hearts, to be a witness to others around you. They went through this terrible sickness. And they still trusted God, right? It's a testimony. God will use everything. We pray for healing. We certainly do. We believe in healing. We certainly do. But above and beyond it all, as the three Hebrew children said, even if God does not deliver, we will still not bow. We still will serve him. Job said, yea, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. 
we need to get to that point <laughs> that I am God's and he is mine and he knows all the things that come upon me. And he will use it for his glory and my good. Imagine that. The same hand that leads us through life will lead us from this life to the next. We need to have that assurance. Paul said we don't grieve as the rest of the world grieves. We don't, because we know what lies ahead. <laughs> I can't think of the man's name in the grief share video, but he says, I think when we get to heaven, he said, we'll wonder why we took all those vitamins. <laughs> Heaven is a real place. Yes, we've got to be good stewards with our body, our finances, everything. But when we belong to him, he's in charge. <laughs> Perfect love casts out all fear. That's what the Bible says. Your troubles weigh in heavy on your heart. Loved ones you know are suffering. <laughs> Worship Jesus. Worship God. In the presence of the Lord, there's joy forevermore. There's joy. There's a peace in God's presence. You start to worry. You start to get anxious. You start to even your heart, even your breathing. You start to get nervous. You set yourself down at God's feet. Set yourself down. Soak in his presence. Be reminded how big God is. Did you notice a lot of our songs today were on how great is our God? Our God is bigger. Our God is greater. Our God is victorious and he will win. The stress starts weighing upon you. Fear starts encroaching upon you. You press into God. He'll remind you how big he is. <laughs> He'll remind you of his love and how he's your refuge and your fortress, your help in time of trouble. He'll be with you. We need to press in. Psalms 56.3 says, what time I am afraid. I love it in the King James. Some verses I just use the King James because that's how I remembered them. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee, the psalmist said. Isaiah 12, 2, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. <laughs> I will trust and not be afraid. That's how the King James says it. Yeah, we need to do that. I just felt I need to remind you of that today. As fear likes to creep into our hearts and our minds, that we press in, we press in, to the Lord because he he's very much aware of what's going on and he will use it for his glory amen amen I want you to stand today if you're dealing with fear and you won't be standing alone because I'm standing <laughs> we need to pray we need to pray God doesn't want us to go around in fear he doesn't. He wants to fill that fear with his presence, <laughs> removing it from us. Lord Jesus, we stand here today in your presence. I thank you for your word, Lord. It is rich and it is powerful and it meets the needs in our lives time and time again. Lord God, we cast our cares upon you. And Lord, we know that you will sustain us. You are our God and you are all powerful and there is none beside you and there is none like you, God. Lord, you are victorious, Lord. You are at peace. And Lord, may your peace descend upon your children. Remind us, O oh God, that our lives are yours. You created us, you redeemed us, and we are yours. And you will have your way in our hearts and in our lives. And Lord, we are safe and we are secure in our trust in you. 
Lord, renew our trust, Lord God. Father, your word says that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint, Lord God. As we wait upon you, Lord, may you descend upon us with the confidence, Lord, that we are yours and you're in control and you will see us through. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. We recommit ourselves to you, O oh Lord. And we ask that you would be glorified in our hearts and in our lives. And Lord, that the times we are afraid, that we will trust in you. Lord, I pray your blessing upon these people. Your protection, your peace, your provision. Lord God, for you are greater than any need that we have. Any fear that we face. Oh, we give you praise today. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you.